Hey, I'm Tamisha Burgess, author of Me Too, Shifting the Narrative. And this is Me Too, audio version. Now, while we love expressing our emotions and our passions through writing, we thought it was also important to create an audio version for those who may not be able to have access to our articles. So share it with those who we may resonate with and get ready to shift. This is Me Too, Shifting the Narrative, a new thought perspective on shifting from pain into power. We hope you enjoy this. We know you will enjoy this. If you have gone through your own Me Too stories, this one is for you. Me Too, Shifting the Narrative a new thought perspective on turning pain into power by Fireside Chats for Global Women. We not only want to share in saying me too about our same kinds of pains, we also want to say me too to our healing, to our same kinds of come-ups, and me too to our new becoming. As we now know it, the Me Too movement, founded by civil and human rights activist Tarana Burke, has taken on a rare and powerful form. With the help of actress Alyssa Milano, who in 2017 tweeted, If you've been sexually harassed or assaulted, write Me Too as a reply to this tweet. Women, men, and grassroots organizations all over the world stood in the gaps with and for those affected by sexual harassment and sexual assault. The catchy phrase developed into a movement that sparked broader impact after the Harvey Weinstein sexual abuse allegations. The Me Too phrase rung loud nationally and internationally as more and more cases began to surface from women and men who were victims. It set the stage and paved the way for those who wanted to expose their offenders and seek justice. But Me Too isn't just a hashtag, as we all know. Its effects run much deeper than a trending topic. But what if we could shift the perspective of Me Too from one that solely focuses on revealing our pains to one that also exposes how well we overcame. Me Too, shifting the narrative, is not in any way attempting to do away with the powerful purpose and the worldwide justice that Me Too has helped to create thus far. Absolutely not. But because it is a new thought perspective about shifting from pain into power, it may challenge some ideas about how we currently see the movement this article aims to shine light on who we decide to become and who we decide to unbecome as a result of our pain through the process of seeking justice and through the process of healing ourselves. It'll create dialogue about how we currently understand Me Too and its potential for gaining an evolutionary meaning. Those of us who are survivors of our Me Too stories have an opportunity, a great opportunity, to not only expose it, but to live on being bold expressions of justice and examples of what turning pain into power really looks like. Cheryl Crow, in 2017, created a Twitter post that read, hashtag Me Too. A manager on my first big tour as a backup singer. I went to a lawyer and he told me to suck it up because the guy could do a lot for me. Rosario Dawson in an interview podcast stated, I was raped and molested as a child. So for me, the world was like that since I was a child. So when I saw it at the workplace, it wasn't foreign to me. 
it was like, well, that even happens within family. It happens with people that are supposed to take care of you when you're a child. America Ferreira. She wrote in an Instagram post, first time I can remember being sexually assaulted, I was nine years old. I told no one and lived with the shame and guilt thinking all along that I, a nine-year-old child, was somehow responsible for the actions of a grown man. I had to see this man on a daily basis for years to come. He would smile at me and wave, and I would hurry past him, my blood running cold, my guts carrying the burden of what only he and I knew, that he expected me to shut my mouth and smile back. Ladies, let's break the silence to the next generation of girls who won't have to live with this bull****. Lady Gaga, in a Rolling Stone interview, stated that the man was 20 years her senior. She's quoted saying, it didn't affect me as much right after as it did about four or five years later. It hit me so hard. I was so traumatized by it that I was like, just keep going because I just had to get out of there. One of the most powerful women on the planet said it best during her 2018 Golden Globe Awards speech that shook the core of everyone listening. And in case you missed it, here's a replay for you. What I know for sure is that speaking your truth is the most powerful tool we all have. And I'm especially proud and inspired by all the women who have felt strong enough and empowered enough to speak up and share their personal stories. Each of us in this room are celebrated because of the stories that we tell. So I want tonight to express gratitude to all the women who have endured years of abuse and assault because they, like my mother, had children to feed and bills to pay and dreams to pursue. They are domestic workers and farm workers. They are working in factories and they work in restaurants and they're in academia and engineering and medicine and science. They're part of the world of tech and politics and business. There are athletes in the Olympics and there are soldiers in the military. For too long, women have not been heard or believed if they dared to speak their truth to the power of those men. But their time is up. Their time is up. And I just hope, I just hope that Reese Taylor died knowing that her truth, like the truth of so many other women who were tormented in those years, and even now tormented, goes marching on. It was somewhere in Rosa Parks' heart almost 11 years later when she made the decision to stay seated on that bus in Montgomery. And it's here with every woman who chooses to say, me too. And every man, every man, who chooses to listen. In my career, what I've always tried my best to do, whether on television or through film, is to say something about how men and women really behave, to say how we experience shame, how we love and how we rage, how we fail, how we retreat, persevere, and how we overcome. I've interviewed and portrayed people who've withstood some of the ugliest things life can throw at you, but the one quality all of them seem to share is an ability to maintain hope for a brighter morning, even during our darkest nights. So I want all the girls watching here and now to know that a new day is on the horizon. And when that new day finally dawns, it will be because of a lot of magnificent women, many of whom are right here in this room tonight, and some pretty phenomenal men.
fighting hard to make sure that they become the leaders who take us to the time when nobody ever has to say, me too, again. Thank you. In an interview with Glamour.com, Gabrielle Union recounts her horrific rape at the age of 19 while working at a Payless shoe store. She's quoted saying, he threw me to the ground and was suddenly on me, spreading my legs as he kept the gun on my head. As he raped me, I began to hover over myself. I could see the whole room. I looked at that poor girl crying and thought, things like this happen to bad people. Things like this don't happen to people like me. He turned me over to go for it, doggy style. He put the gun down, placing it right next to me. Can you hand me the gun? He said it casually as he ripped into me, like he was asking for salt. I grabbed that mother gun and I shot at him. I can go back to that moment right now. The sound of the gunshot, every muscle in my body tense, the smell of gunpowder. Gabrielle states that she didn't leave her house for a year after her rape, unless she had to appear in court or attend therapy. She's quoted saying, fear still influences everything I do. I tell the story because people need to know healing is a process. A slow process, like moving a boulder uphill with one hand tied behind your back. But there is hope. The question now is, after we have worked our asses off to rebuild what was shattered by unthinkable offenses, what Me Too story do we want to tell from now on? And where does the story begin? Fighting hard to make sure that we become the leaders who take us to a time when nobody ever has to say Me Too again is the volition that fuels a new Me Too era. In this new era, we get to choose. We get to choose what story to write, what story to live, and what story to share with the world around us. But. It first begins with shifting the energy of the term from a place where only the pain is exposed to a place that also exposes how we fought to win justice and how we continue to rise above it all. Now, does working to rise above it all allow us to actually forgive and actually forget? Heck no, no. Forgiving and forgetting, honestly, is no longer energetically possible. I mean, think about this. When the sting of our abuse continues to linger in our inner worlds, is it energetically feasible to forget? Unless we take the red, blue, or green pill approach, we are faced with the decision to rise above it or live with whatever the opposite is, whatever that is for either of us individually. Either way, the choice is always, always ours to make. But before choosing to accept the opposite of rising, let's ponder together a bit on the genie in the bottle concept. Now, just roll with me for a bit here, okay? I promise not to be corny. The story of genie in bottles is always bittersweet, right? From first being in the hands of some monstrous, greedy person who abused, misused, and cracked the bottle, to finally, through a course or a series of fortunate and unfortunate events, being in the hands of a kind and deserving soul. But what can be learned from this childhood story? I say, the cracks may represent what we endured, just like the genie bottle, but what can be unleashed through the brokenness <laughs> is the essence that allows our alchemy to emerge. What's alchemy? A power or process 
that changes or transforms something in a mysterious or impressive way. We are alchemists, ladies. One of my favorite poets, writers, said it best. The wound, the wound is, the, is place the place where the where light, light enters, light enters you. you. Rumi, Persian. Those of us who are working to deal with and are in the process of healing through our past Me Too stories, or those of us who are currently in the thick of it, we're already on the journey, believe it or not. We're on the journey of shifting the narrative and shifting pain energy. We are the ones that are deemed the alchemists of the female species. <laughs> we are the alchemists of the female species. We should say that together. I am the alchemist of the female species. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Women who are transformed by the pain and not just broken by it, not only say me too as a way to share our same wounds, but we also say me too to succeeding and propelling from where we were to where we are now. We also say me too to becoming powerful healers, to becoming teachers and powerful creators. Now, we are not saying that we want to choose to be the beacon or poster women for enduring pain. Heck no. But what we are saying is that we learned how to become powerful healers by first aiding our own scars. Right? By first aiding our own scars. There, to me, <laughs> there is no one better at making and teaching healing tonics than a woman who suffered her own deep wounds, sweetie. I'm gonna say that again. There is no one better at making and teaching healing tonics than a woman who suffered her own deep wounds. Mm. Powerful, isn't it? In all transparency, there are some pains that continue to linger. There are some areas where the scars of the cracks that healed over still remain. So, since this may be the case for some of us, why not use it? Why not use the pain? Channel what was unleashed through the brokenness into a healing tonic for the soul. A soul tonic, so to speak that empowers from a place where we not only share and sing Me Too about our same kinds of pains, but also from a place and to a place where we get to say Me Too to our healing, where we get to say Me Too to our same kinds of come-ups and Me Too to ever becoming. Are you, Are you ready, ready, ready to shift? shift, shift, shift. <laughs> I'm going to share with you five steps to start your shift from pain to power. Now, before I get started on these really simple five steps and practices that we can do at home, I want to recommend an awesome, awesome read. It's one of the most powerful books of our time. It's titled Sacred Woman, A Guide to Healing the Feminine Body, Mind, and Spirit by the beautiful amazing teacher, creator, and a woman that first aided her own scars, and a woman that is teaching healing tonics herself, Queen Afua. So if you ever get the chance to get your hand on this book, please do so. It is definitely a must-have. Now, if you're not in a space where you can truly work through these exercises that we're about to go through, you may want to pause this and wait until you're home or are in a safe place to do so, okay? Now, you may continue to listen if you choose to, but some of the practices going forward will require um, some 
comfortable space or setting to, to do these practices in. Some of them may be a little strange if meditation or any type of meditation practices are new to you, but it's the beginning stages and I'm right here with you. Step one, stand in front of your bathroom mirror or long standing mirror in your home. And while staring at your reflection, realize that in this moment, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters more than the healing tonic you're about to give yourself. Silence your phone, silence your notifications, emails, now. Step two, this is the moment where you allow. Take a few deep breaths. And another. And just allow. Allow yourself to be exactly where you are now, right now, in this space, in this moment. Without any regards to what has been, without any regards to what may be, tomorrow doesn't exist and yesterday is gone. Just right now in this moment, allow yourself to be with yourself. Repeat after me. I allow. I allow what is light and I allow what is dark. Ready for step three? Now, this part may be a little uncomfortable for some of us. So if it is, take your time with yourself. There's no need to rush through these practices at all. Step three requires you to be totally transparent with yourself. And the way to allow transparency with yourself before you allow it with the rest of the world is to be totally, unequivocally naked and bare. So step three, remove your clothes and stand naked. Yes, I said remove your clothes and stand naked naked, completely bare. Do it now. If you're not in a place where you can be alone, find a place, find a spot, go in your bathroom, close the door. Now, really look at yourself. Study everything. Stare at the stretch marks on your hips or your breast. Accept these marks. Accept them. Realize that these marks are proof of how powerfully you can expand. That's all it means. It's just a reflection of how powerfully you can expand. So stare at them, embrace them. Even notice how one breast is slightly larger than the other. Embrace it. Even smile a little bit at yourself. Smile, just a little. Look at your eyes, your hairline, your stomach. Turn to the side, look at yourself. And smile. Allow yourself to be totally transparent and accept and embrace your own reflection. Now, turn back forward towards your mirror. Look in your own eyes right now and say, how can I better serve you? And say it in a sexy way too. Make it sound enticing for you to serve your own self. How can I better serve you? 
and say your name. Say your own name. So for me, I'm saying, how can I better serve you, Tamisha? How can I better serve you? Then wait for a moment. Wait for a moment and feel your own reply. Powerful, isn't it? To think about how we can better serve ourselves. A lot of the times throughout our lives, we're waiting for someone else to ask us this question. But how sexy is it to ask yourself? Step four, caress your own body from head to toe. Grab your favorite body lotion or your favorite body cream and literally caress your body from head to toe and take your time. This is your time. This is your moment. Take your time and caress your body. The fingertips, your shoulders, your neck, your lower back. Stretch your body and reach down to your ankles and to your toes. For some of us, the first form of what we thought to be intimate touch, unfortunately was learned at the hands of our abuser. So in order to rewire our receptors on touch being safe, we teach ourselves what a warm hug or sacred touch really feels like by embracing our own body. So in this moment, embrace your body. Teach your body what loving touch really is in this moment. And last but not least, step five, affirm your shift. So here we go. Here we go, ladies. We're going to repeat this. Repeat it out loud and be as loud as you want to be. I don't care where you are. If you're in the bathroom at Starbucks, it doesn't matter. Say it as loud and as proud as you can. So here we go. Repeat after me. Yes, I know what being broken feels like. But I say that through this brokenness, I arose. That through this brokenness, my I am shines as the dawn of this new day. <laughs> we can say it again. Yes, I know what brokenness feels like. But I say that through this brokenness, I arose. Through this brokenness, my I am shines as the dawn of this new day. Yes. Yes, ladies, close your eyes and imagine as you are saying that, that hundreds and thousands of other women are rising to meet you and proclaiming me too, me too, me too, me too, me too. And so it is. And so it is. Ah, oh, that feels amazing. This is Me Too shifting the narrative, new thought perspective on turning pain into power by Fireside Chats for Global Women. Ladies, you have now shifted into power and it feels damn good, doesn't it? Yes, because turning pain into power is sexy. Don't forget, follow us on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube at Fireside Chats for Global Women. Uh, follow us on Instagram at Fireside Chats for Global Women. And feel free to follow me on Instagram as well at Tanisha Burgess. And also, ladies, keep in touch with us. Email us your questions and stick with us. We're right here with you. You are not alone. Email us at Fireside Chats for Global Women at gmail.com. We love you. We are here with you and we'll see you next time. 
Peace.